Hello and welcome to the first video on this channel on modeling in R. What we're going to be doing in this video is implementing the rock paper scissors cohort model that we've previously shown in Excel. Now I'm going to show you how to implement it in R. So all I've done is open R Studio. I would thoroughly recommend you install R Studio yourself. So install R first and then R Studio. When you load yours up, it's not going to look exactly like mine. Um, yours is probably going to look more like this. Um, but that's a bit hard on the eyes for a full day's work. So I use the pastel on dark theme. I also have the fire code uh, font, which you can go ahead and find on GitHub. And you'll notice here that gives you these nice ligatures. So instead of having a less than sign and then a dash, it renders out as a um, as a left arrow. OK. So the first step that we're going to do is uh, create a variable for how many cycles we're having in our model. And in this case, it's going to be 20. In our studio, you get to see all of these things as they get defined. This model also has three states. That's a useful thing to know. So I'm going to call that n subscript s or n underscore s. And then finally, what's the cohort size? We're going to start off with a thousand in our cohort model. Great. So hopefully this is all fairly simple. The next thing I'm going to do is give some names to my states. So we have a rock, paper, scissors state. Great. And now it's going to start getting a bit more complicated because I'm going to define the transition probability matrix. And you'll notice I've used n underscore when I've got a number, a count of something. I've got v underscore where I've got a vector. And then I've got m underscore for a matrix. This is a um, a convention that you might see used elsewhere. So just introducing it now. OK, right. This is going to be a matrix. So we use the matrix function. And the first thing that you tell it is going to be the data that goes in. OK, so often you'll find it easier to enter your matrix by row rather than by column. But to do that, you do need to tell R that that's what you're doing, because otherwise it will assume you're giving your data by column. So here I've got my first row is that 0 0.205, 0 0.41, 0 0.385. And then on the next row, and then on the final row, we've got 0 0.4, 0 0.267, and 0.333. R is also not going to know how many rows and columns you want, so you can tell it. It will work out from this that you want three columns, but there's no harm in being explicit about that. And we could stop there, but I think it's also nice to make it display nicely. So I'm going to tell it that the first dimension, so that's the, uh, the rows, is the state that you're coming from. And then the second dimension, which is the columns, is the state that you're going to. OK, so we press Enter. Now, if I type M underscore P, it will just display that. And we can see that we've got from these states to these states and the transition probabilities. I might be interested to check that the uh, row sums are all one. That's good. OK, and now the next thing we need to do is create a data structure where we can store the state membership over time. So you might call that the Markov trace. I'm just going to call it state membership. And I want to start off with an array which is full of NAs. And the reason I start off with an array full of NAs is because it's very clear if I've made an error and forgotten to calculate any of these values, because I'll be left with an NA, whereas I expect everything to be an actual number. The dimensions of this array, I want the first dimension to be 
the cycles. So I've got one up to nt of those. And then the next one is going to be the number of states. So one up to ns of those. And then again, I think it's nice to give names to these dimensions. So the first one is the cycles, which go from one to nt. And then the second one is the state. And we've already got a vector for those state names. OK, so if we just have a look at that now by typing it, we've got what we expect. So it's full of NAs because we haven't actually calculated anything yet. The cycle goes from 1 up to 20, and the state goes rock, paper, scissors. One of the things that's nice in our studio is the view command, which can be helpful if you've got a very large array. If you don't want to type that, you can also find it here. You press on this button and it will show you. You can also have a look at the transition probability matrix in the same way. OK, we'll close those out. Right. We know that in the first cycle, we have NC, so that was a thousand, you'll recall, um, of the cohort in the rock state, zero in papers, zero in scissors. So then if we have another look at this, we'll see that we filled in that first row, but the rest of them are still NAs. So our final step is to do a for loop. So for i in 2 up to nt, because we've already calculated for the first row, we'll do something in braces. So the state membership in cycle i should be equal to the state membership in the previous cycle matrix product with mp. So if you're not familiar with matrix multiplication, you might need to go away and do some research. But in R, percent asterisk percent is, uh, is the operator for matrix multiplication. You press Enter, and that is now all done for us. So we'll see we've got rock, paper, and scissors, and we end up reaching that steady state as we've seen previously. So that's that. It didn't take very many lines at all, you know. Not a lot of work to do. Um, in future videos, we'll be doing things like looking at how the transition probabilities can vary over time, how you can associate payoffs with these states so that you're calculating costs and qualities. But this is just a simple introduction, and hopefully that's all nice and clear.